So now we've looked at a really overview of the Renaissance and looked at one particular one particular thinker that developed medical thought at this time. We're going to have a look at a couple of others and really how they made um, improvements during this period. Okay, so the Renaissance medicine was dominated by the works of William Harvey and Ambrose Perret. Okay, and these two had different different um, different professions, we would say. However, they they really brought in a wave of new ideas in into the into the into the renaissance period okay so harvey discovered how blood circulates around the body so effectively the cardiovascular system so the cardio cardiovascular system which as i'm sure we all know is very very important and Pere made surgery more effective okay pere it could be pere or pe you know however however you want it however you want to pronounce it okay so we'll have a look a little bit first at william harvey okay he was born in 1578 so a little bit later than uh, vesilius okay who we looked at in the last video and again he also studied medicine at the same university as the person we previously looked at okay and he worked at the Royal College of Physicians, where he did study both humans and animals. And before Harvey, this is really a, a real good way of looking at the sort of developments in medicine for in the Renaissance period, is to compare the discoveries that they made, like Harvey and, and Pear, the, the discoveries that they made compared to the findings or the, the, the works of Galen and the classical um the classical thinkers because the renaissance is seen as a, a a rediscovery of the classical of the classical world and with this rediscovery we find that the the thinkers at the in the at the contemporary time in the 1570s and the 1600s they they saw galen's work as a little bit outdated okay so before harvey people believed that uh, believed galen that there were two kinds of blood so galen believed that there were two kinds of blood and people just just went along with that thought process okay so rather than there being two kinds of blood in the body harvey discovered that blood just simply circulates around the body which is the modern interpretation now as well which is therefore proving galen to be galen to be wrong and during this time when galen was seen as 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 such a as such a an orthodox thinker the 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 original um the original doctor who who discovered all these different things when somebody comes along and and proves them wrong then people tend to tend to there's tend to be sort of backlash against them so not everyone believed in harvey believed his theories okay people people rejected the the view that that galen could be wrong or the view that galen was wrong about anything and as a result bloodletting was still um uh, was still continued before people accepted it and just to be clear bloodletting is 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 still a medical procedure that can be used today okay and it's only used for very few um certain conditions that that actually it helps for okay anything else and it's it's not used however as we know from the earlier earliest times in in the development of medicine all the way up to around this period bloodletting was still used for effectively everything okay now in 1510 earlier than um earlier than harvey uh ambrose pear was born okay was a french barber surgeon okay we'll talk about the barber surgeons uh, later on in another video um and but mainly he was a he was a he was a surgeon okay and they and they developed the different uh, different aspects of surgery so it was still seen as a a low low in status to be a surgeon and for surgery to be really popular okay worked in a public hospital and treated many injuries often caused by war now war provided a lot of uh, research opportunities shall we say for surgery so war war did provide opportunities 
opportunities for surgery for surgery so a lot of things were learned from the injuries caused by war and during this time during the development of weapons like uh, the gun uh, we find that gunshot wounds would become infected and the usual treatment would be to cauterize the wound or burn the wound okay and this is uh, it's an effective method to prevent blood loss to, to cauterize however it's not an effective method to prevent infection because one of the things you will learn in biology or medicine in general is that cauterizing a wound uh, has its benefits if you want to stop um, blood loss and things like that or to close up the wound however the downside is it makes it more uh, it, it means it increases infection okay so in infection would increase when you burn the wound uh, on in most cases okay and uh, during a battle Peer ran out of oil so used ointment okay and he published his ideas the ideas were published to enable others to read about them okay and over time these would improve surgical techniques so the two main thinkers we've looked at here we've got the real um real critique of the classical thinkers and especially looking at the cardiovascular system and the circulatory system and then we also have uh, Peer who really really brought about some new ideas within surgery.